Oscar Bevis, IFL TV MTK Global, delighted to be joined by Mr. Amar Kayani. How are we, mate? Not too bad, Oscar. Thank you. How's, how's it going? How are you? I'm good. This is quite annoying because this is like take five and this is the coldest gym in the world, yeah? Do you not, like, does Stuart not have any money or anything? Can he not put a fucking heater in this gym? Do I'm not? No, do you know what? We do have heaters in here, but we only use them when it's just me in here. Now, I'm joking. We do have heaters, but um, they make a lot of noise to turn on. So, obviously, right now, it's the gas heaters and they're proper loud. So, if we did turn it on, it would just be too loud for the interview. Just accommodating IFL TV. <laughs> um, let's talk about your last interview. So, the comment section on IFL at times can be a bit harsh. People can say some rogue comments at times, but... You got loads of love. It was your IFL debut. You went deep into your story and how you sort of tried to pull yourself away from a bad pass, should we say, into boxing. And uh, yeah, you got a lot of love. Yeah, like I said, like normally people always give the IFL TV audiences and uh, should I say commenters and subscribers a lot of stick and say, look, they're always so mean to everyone. But you know what? They showed me loads of love. I can't complain. So, you know, what? just show me more love in this comment section. You know what? This comment section is probably going to be fucked now because everyone's going to be like, you know what? because yeah. <laughs> the last one nah, nah, honestly man it was really good the last comment section and um, I appreciate everyone sharing love and literally all these people saying good stuff and thank you for sharing and uh, commenting it'll be nice if those people can follow your career into a potential fight date which you still don't have you're in the small hall boxing loop of not having a fight date but still working still grafting grinding away in the gym sparring as well um, yeah. yeah just mentally tough I imagine I mean yeah it's mentally tough but alhamdulillah like we're built for this man so it's nothing I can't handle. Obviously, even without a fight day, I'm going to train like I'm fighting. So I'm ready to go next week. If someone is to call me, a promoter, and say, look, we've got a fight for you. Obviously, that, that being, they're not going to rob me. And like, you know, like if it's a fair fight, I'll be going. If it, any 50-50 fight, I'll take as long as, you know, it's fair. And um, yeah, we stay strong mentally, physically, and um, always ready, always in camp 24-7. Have you not thought about perhaps pushing yourself towards, because obviously you do have the televised shows and there'll be people who want to match their prospects in step ups and not against your journeymen because they don't really sell for TV in this sort of uh, stage we're at. Um, have you not thought of messaging out and saying, you know, I'll, I'll take any of these prospects or are you just sort of sitting back and almost waiting because an opportunity will come. Are you just sort of waiting or have you thought, you know, well, let me message Matram, let me message Frank and just see if they've got anyone they can, they can chuck at me. Um, you know what? I haven't, myself personally, I haven't messaged no one. I've got like a good friend of mine, that my, he does a lot of my PR stuff, Ben. He's been messaging a few people and uh, trying to seek opportunities for me. But um, I'm a strong believer in that whatever is going to happen is going to happen. Your risk is written. So if I'm going to fight at some point, it's already written when I'm going to fight. Or if I'm, however much money I'm going to make throughout my boxing career is written. So I'm not going to I'm not going to rush what's going to happen already. Well, this brings me on to Pakistan. I love this so much because you've got to seek your own opportunities if things aren't going your way. And um, with your dual nationality, you've been speaking to the PCB, the Pakistan Boxing Council or PBC. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, yeah, and there is, I suppose, a potential opportunity on the horizon. Nothing concrete, but uh, yeah, you could use a dual nationality to fight on a show in Pakistan. Yeah, definitely. So I've messaging, uh, I've been messaging the PBC, and I've been in talks with them, and I've, um, they're more than willing to give me an opportunity to fight on one of their shows. I've I spoke to them, and they said to me, when there's something arranged, as long as I've got all my medicals and everything sorted here, I can go out there and fight. And I think it's a really good way to stay taken over. I mean, I have, I'm not sure why a lot of boxers haven't been doing it. I know a few have, but for people like me that can or they, they should make, them, uh, make the most of the opportunity. As well as staying active though, like, and I suppose you've got to look at it from this aspect. Do the Pakistani public need someone to get behind? Obviously, they were massively behind Amir Khan. I know Mohammed Wasim's well supported, but not being funny, like you could increase your support tenfold by going out there and knocking someone out and getting a highlight reel knockout on this. Oh, here's a Mark Ayani, the next big thing. Do you know what I mean though? Like, it, it's, it's a possibility and perhaps Pakistan needs someone to, to back as well. Yeah, 100%. Look, if the PBC president is watching this, or else is watching this, get me out there, get me a title shot. I'll fight the title shot for my debut, <laughs> my Pakistan debut, that is. Um, I mean, the super welterweight champion out there, I think he's 8-0. I'd be more than willing to fight him if they give me the opportunity. I mean, not going to call him out. He's, he's probably a good boxer. He's probably got skills. But, um, but yeah, let's get it cracking. Go on, take that. This is going to be a fight offer. This is going to be the... I'm not going to answer. You know what? Oh, yeah, I was waiting for like, a live fight offer on IFL there. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I suppose, is, is it an opportunity that makes sense? I mean, you could wait. Small Hall Boxing might return in the summer as well. And I know Steve rates you highly and you sell a lot of tickets. So um, you could, I suppose, wait for a Small Hall opportunity in the summer. Yeah, no, a um, million percent. I'm going to wait for my opportunities to come back again in the summer. Hopefully, uh, the guidelines are eased and all the restrictions are lifted. And then uh, we'll be, we're, get, we're definitely going to have some shows in the summer again. 
But I'm just eager to get out there as soon as possible. So if they if they say to me there's a show in two, three weeks in Pakistan, I'll be happy to go out there and fight a six or eight or ten rounder. It'll be fine. Not saying the boxers there are bad, like it'll be okay. But though. you'll take it as short notice because of the lack of opportunities like, like yeah, so far, yeah. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. At least I'll get I don't even if I don't get a fair shake there, most probably spark most of them. Nah, joking. Um it should be okay there. I should get a fair shake, hopefully. You'd like to think so because you've got dual nationality. You'd like to think you'd get a fair shake over there. Um, yeah, we were talking in the car, right? And, you know, I don't want to stick anything on you, but obviously the YouTube boxing thing's become massive. And it was only yesterday we saw Jake Paul call out Tommy Fury and Tommy Fury respond to you. I just want to know what your thoughts are on it because we said for a laugh, like, oh, you should call out Jake Paul and it's all good fun and that, you know, mm -hmm. Jake Paul's not going to fight you, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. But I just want to know your thoughts on that whole scene because yeah. it's sort of taken off and, I don't know, Tommy Fury's got a career that's going to go in one direction. And if he fights Jake Paul and, no, it's just all a bit weird. I just want to know your thoughts on it. Do you know what? I don't understand the stick that people are giving all these YouTubers for fighting. Look, these guys are fighting. They're bringing publicity to boxing. You get all these kids used to watch Minecraft. Now they're watching boxing because of YouTube, because of these YouTubers that are boxing. Do you know what I mean? These kids used to be just, I don't know what they used to watch on the internet, like Roblox. What's it called? Roblox or something. They used to watch the Roblox videos and that. So now they're actually watching YouTubers, the same YouTubers that used to play these games, fight in a boxing ring. It's just gonna, they're going to get interested into the sport. They're going to start watching more and more boxing. They might, you know what, they might watch it like um, Jake Paul was in the undercard of, uh, was it a Mike Tyson event? Yeah. So most of them kids probably stayed and watched the whole event. They probably didn't know who Mike Tyson was and Roy Jones was before that. Well, they probably did, but they probably didn't have watched some box before. So yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good for boxing. Obviously, I don't agree that they should get like, people like McGregor, I don't agree they should get like title shots on their second or third fight. But in terms of just these YouTubers boxing, why not? It's not it's nothing, not taking nothing away from the real boxers. We're like, not going to make us any weaker or anything. Do you know what I mean? Can you understand boxers entertaining it as well? Because the fact that Tommy Fury responded to Jake Paul, can you understand it? Because let's be honest, that's a bit of a, that's a cash cow, that, isn't it, fighting Jake Paul? So can you understand the fact why a professional boxer, albeit, you know, you'd feel would be a level above these YouTubers, would sort of show their interest in that? Do you know, it's a bit of a cop-out. I mean, it is a bit of a, like... Um, so, um, yeah, I can understand because obviously for the money, if there's a lot of money involved, loads of people are willing to do anything. So like, if Jake Paul said to me tomorrow, he'll give me like, even like if he's 10 grand to fight him, I'd fight him. Do you know what I mean? So I'll beat him up, get the 10 grand, he'll benefit me and my family. He's low budget there <laughs> if he's offering you 10 grand. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it for five grand. I'll just knock him out for everyone. But nah, honestly, yeah, for a couple million, like definitely, man. Why not? Obviously, um, I don't know. I don't know how it works over there, but it's hard to get sanctioned as a pro boxer in this country. So in this country, the YouTubers, they actually have to be quite decent. Like, I don't think a lot of them would get a sanction there. Like that basketball, I don't know how you got sanctioned in America. That guy could not punch a move. Yeah, fair enough. Like, I know KSI has been sanctioned there by the BBOC, but he could fight a little bit at least. You know what I mean? And he's trained by like uh, a well-respected amateur and a pro. Well, actually, no, because I think because KSI and Logan, wasn't it in America because they couldn't get sanctioned over here possibly? I don't know, but I know what you mean. It's hard to get sanctioned. We've seen... Like, oh, do you yeah. remember Rio Ferdinand wanted to turn professional <laughs> once and he couldn't get sanctioned? Do you know what I mean? And he'd just come out of football. So it's not like anyone can just sign up and have a scrap. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the first one was a white qualify. fight. I forgot. I thought yeah, the yeah, first yeah. was a pro fight too. Yeah, over here it's a lot harder. So over here, obviously, I, the BBFOC is uh, it's a bit better here. So you're willing to travel to the States for Jake then? I'll go there, whoop him and come back, man. I'm, the, I'm ready. Just call me, Jake. I'm ready. <laughs> um, just finally, I want to talk about... Uh, Raven, I know you've shared, uh, I'll say rounds with her. Um, she's just signed a managerial deal, deal with Steffi, um, looking like she might be heading to a, a big TV platform as well. Can't confirm too much yet, but yeah. And you've shared rounds with her, you've seen her in the gym. Um, what do you make of her? Because there's talk that she could go all the way as a female fighter. Yeah, Raven, she's brilliant, man. She's good. Like, obviously, we've moved around in the ring and she's really good. Normally, you jump in there with, with female boxers and you have to pull your shots a little bit. I was trying to lock her up. No, I'm joking. I wasn't trying to lock her up. Obviously not. But, um, but she's good. You know, when you're in, you're in there with her, when she's moving, she's punching. Her punches are hard. She's strong. She's got good movement. She's really good. I could really see her going the whole way. I think she's got like world championship mindset and everything. She's going to go to the top, hopefully. You said you were trying to knock her out and then you were joking. But I bet she was trying to knock you out though, wouldn't she? I bet she was. I don't know. I don't know. I hope not. Like, nah, I don't think she was. I think when we, when we move with each other, we're just taking it easy, just moving, tapping each other. But yeah, when she spars these other girls, I see the like the venom she puts in her shots and I think, yo, no, she's really good and she could actually, when she gets the small gloves on in the pro ring, she could spark someone out. Well, yeah, I mean, just fine. It's a good feel here, isn't it? I mean, Stuart's got you, he's got Raven, he's got a couple of other people he's looking to turn pro. So, I don't know, could people talk about this gym in a few years as somewhere that's 
producing beasts for the pros? Yeah, hundred percent. I think in a few years' time we're gonna have some really, really good pros. We'll have some British champions, some world champions, some Pakistani champions. Yeah, some Pakistani <laughs> champions. I'm gonna be the first one. And obviously, and the amateurs are really uh, the amateur boxing in this in this gym is crazy, man. It's really good. Obviously, it's, it's a bit sad what's happening right now with the amateur scene and everything's getting delayed and all the England boxing. I don't know what they're playing at, man. They, these kids need to box, even if they need to box behind closed doors. Just get them boxing, man. They don't want, it's not all about money and crowds sometimes. Just get them some shows in gyms, get everyone tested, let them fight, man. My younger cousin, Jamal Keone, and my younger brother, Kasim Keone, these guys are supposed to be boxing in the ABAs and they've been waiting for so long so they could box, win it, go into Team GB or turn pro, but everything's been halted, man. Everything's just stopped. Yeah, torrid time for for amateur boxing as well. And uh, you mentioned the other Kayanis around, and that just brought me on. I can't believe I dismissed it. Kayani camp. What's the update? We need an update. Because I remember before you was talking about how you'd gone from sparring in car parks and things like that, and you were talking about potentially getting your own place and bringing on your uh, youth camp, I suppose, in Kayani camp. Uh, Yeah, update. I know you've got your own place in the works. Yeah, so I can't say too much at the moment, but hopefully by the end of April, we should have everything cemented, everything done. I mean, I want to give a big shout out to British Land and Alex from British Land for making it like very easy for us to get this far even. And hopefully we'll have a place for the kids where they can come and train with us, come and just spar, get them off the streets, get them into the ring. We're going to be working on loads of projects around the area. So it's not just going to be boxing. We want them to get off the street, get into the gym, train, stay fit, obviously, maybe even teach them to coach, have something to do in the future rather than just just not be in the gym and be in the street selling drugs and that. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be a really good 2021 for us. And I said I'll be down in April time. You reckon this will all get sorted? So we'll come down and we'll sort of film the events you have and try and capture all, all the sort of stuff there? Yeah, that would be quality. If you can come down and just show everyone the updates and uh, I'll show you some of the kids that are in that gym. They're really talented, man. So proper, proper boxers, not just like... Um, just street fighters, they can actually box. So hopefully by twenty, by by mid by September, I want to be f- fully fighting in tournaments, and literally have the club fighting like national champions and everything. Brilliant! Sounds good. And uh, do you reckon we could get a shout out in, or is he too worried about his trim? What do you reckon? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll give him a shout out. Come, no, <laughs> come jump in the camera. So, all right, yeah, this is it. This is it. The next featherweight champion. Now I'm joking. This is it. So, yeah, Jamal, big yourself up, man. What's, what's good? I'm Jamal Kioni. I'm an elite amateur. I'm, you know, I'm trying to win the ABAs, hopefully. <laughs> I'm trying to win the ABAs, hopefully. So, yeah, man. All of all the amateurs around the world. No one around the world in England. Yeah, watch out for me. I'm going to come for all of you. All right, all right. Breathe Smoke out. Breathe out. Breathe out. Breathe out. So, Papa. Sorry about that. I'm really sorry about that. We, they didn't, I didn't understand you didn't know how to speak. <laughs> so, you know, if that doesn't get deleted out, you're, you're finished. You're finished now. He was too worried about the haircut. Now he's got to be worried about what he said. <laughs> I feel bad there, but... Now look, um, yeah, all good fun, all good fun down here, and like I said, I'll come and see you at Kayani Camp, and then hopefully things progress, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know, just want boxing back to normal. Yeah, 100%, respect for coming down again, and um, yeah, man, people, stay following me, Kayani Camp, Kayani am on Instagram, hopefully you're looking at the next Pakistan champion. <laughs>